Hello, I'm Steve Muskery and welcome back to my workshop. Now then, how do you cut your tenons? Over the years, I think I've tried just about every method that there is. I've got umpteen router jigs, and indeed, I've published some of them. They're all good. They all have their strengths. But they all have their weaknesses too. This sled is great for small tenons, and it works well even if you only have a small router and router table. The downsides are that I'm referencing off two faces, and as soon as the workpiece becomes of any size, the sled can become unwieldy. It's fine for small-scale hobby use, but I could never describe this as a production tool. For large pieces, like the bottom rail of a front door, I keep the workpiece flat and I move the router. It's easy work, but relatively slow, and as the jig fouls the dust extraction port of the router, I have to clear away the debris regularly. Again, it's not a production method, but as I don't have to do this kind of work very often, I don't mind. It allows me to cut large tenons accurately with a small machine, and that's the most important thing. This vertical jig is probably my favourite router jig. I'm referencing off just one face, which makes it intrinsically more accurate. It's excellent, but the tenon length is limited by the length of the cutter and the length of the workpiece is limited by how high I can conveniently work above the floor. It's great though for angle tenons and chair rails. There is no one jig that is perfect, until now. More recently I've been using a jig like this to cut tenons on my table saw. Now, of course, the idea of cutting tenons on a table saw is not a new one. There are lots of plans available for jigs in magazines and on the internet, and you can buy cast iron versions from a range of manufacturers, and they all work. But I hope to persuade you that this is, in fact, the best table saw tenon jig in the world. Well, someone has to have it, and it might as well be me. It's a bold and arrogant claim, I know. How can I possibly justify it? Table saw tenon jigs rely on making two cuts to cut the left and right hand cheeks of the tenon. This was the first table saw jig that I made in about the late 1980s using plans from fine woodworking. The one in the magazine was rather grander than this, but functionally this is identical. You clamp your workpiece upright, cut one cheek of the tenon, and then undo the base and wind it on as far as you want. One millimetre for one turn. And you have to take into account the width of the tenon and the thickness of the curve of your saw blade. Then tighten it up, then make the second pass. It's very, very slow. If you lose count of how far you've turned, you're messed up. And if you want to go back to the original position again, that's actually very difficult to do because of the play in the lead screw. It also has a much more fundamental weakness in that this is designed to be used with an unguarded saw blade. Now, this is the 1980s and we do things differently now, don't we? But I wouldn't dream of trying to cut a tenon, or in fact anything, using an unguarded table saw. It's just not worth the risk. And it can always be guarded, you just have to think a little more creatively. My jig can go from cutting one cheek to cutting the second cheek as quickly as that. 
And furthermore, I can go back to the original position any time I like. And that is exactly the original position. This means that I don't have to clamp every workpiece twice, once to cut all the left hand cheeks, and then go through them all again to cut all the right hand cheeks. It has good capacity. This 10 inch table saw can cut tenons 80 millimeters long. That's over three inches. And the length of my workpiece is determined only by the height of the ceiling. Finally, this jig is guarded. It's guarded before the cut, during the cut, and crucially, at the end of the cut, when my hand is furthest forward and closest to the blade. Here is my finished tenon. I have trimmed the width on the bandsaw. I know this is a table saw tenon jig, but actually the bandsaw is the most sensible tool to do that with. And here is my mortise, so let's see if they fit. Absolutely perfect. And if you wedge your tenons, then it ends up looking like that. It's also a very versatile jig. I can cut a number of different kinds of joints with it. This twin tenon is a perfect fit in the twin mortise. And it's just as easy to cut with this jig as an ordinary tenon is. By attaching a subface, I can cut splines for mitres on picture frames, for example, or even twin splines, such as on this circular table ring. I've had the audacity to call this the ultimate table saw tenon jig, but I do hope that I've been able to convince you of the merits of using this system. It really is as good as it looks. I've not faked the fit, I've not speeded up the film. What you see is what you get. It's versatile, it's accurate, it's fast. And of course, it's a heck of a lot cheaper than buying a commercial model. It's also guarded so you'll be cutting your joints safely, right, first time, every time. And that's why I think that this is the best table saw tenon jig in the world. Until, of course, you build a better one. If you would like to learn more about how to build and use this excellent jig, then plans are available now on this brand new DVD from WorkshopEssentials.com. The DVD contains a much longer version of this film. It runs for just over an hour, and it shows you in detail how to build and use the jig. The DVD also contains DVD-ROM content. There are complete written instructions and a full set of drawings which you can print out and take into the workshop with you. Now, the DVD is not expensive. And indeed, if you buy Workshop Essentials Volumes 1 and 2 at the same time, I'll do you a special offer. These are packed with jigs and accessories and gadgets and other woody goodies. Every woodworker should have this in his or her library. Thank you for joining me in the Workshop Essentials Workshop. Until the next time, I wish you safe and happy woodworking. Cheerio!